and basically the underlying cause is inflammation. And basically, unless you attack that inflammation, you will never be successful in treating obesity. Great answer. Um, you talk about, in your book, the perfect nutritional storm. Is like Sebastian Unger somewhere in this book? Or uh, <laughs> what do you mean by that? You can tell the, the well, viewing audience. Well, uh, again, that, uh, we try to point the finger at some boogeyman, say it must be high fructose corn syrup. No, it's high fat. Well, there's no boogeyman involved in terms of our obesity epidemic. What it is, is that people who are genetically predisposed to become obese will under the right circumstances. It's in their genes. Mm -hmm. They can't change their genes, but those genes can either be expressed or repressed by their dietary environment. And what's happened over the last 30 years has been the development of this, what I call this perfect nutritional storm, where there was no any one particular item, but three particular ones that all came together at the same mm -hmm. time. The first was an increase in consumption of refined carbohydrates. Yes, that's more junk food, but that is also basically pasta, bagels, and pizza. Now that by itself... That's what everybody loves. Well, of course. <laughs> uh, and that's become the number one food stock of America. Now that will raise the hormone insulin. Mm -hmm. That by itself is not sufficient. You had to wait for the other shoe to drop. And this was the radical increase in the levels of omega-6 fatty acids. It's omega-6 fatty acids when combined with high levels of insulin that form toxic fat. And that basically was the driving force. And so now, the two cheapest forms of calories known to mankind are the most ubiquitous in America. And as a consequence, we've had the epidemic of toxic fat. But we always had one trump card that could hopefully hold back that dam of inflammation. And this is adequate intake of omega-3 fatty acids. Now, unfortunately, these fatty acids have decreased in our diet by some 90% over the last century. And so as all these three factors came together first in America, we had this explosion of obesity. Around the world people say, Americans are fat because they're stupid, they're lazy. Well, that could be true. But all of a sudden, this information this is, coming is being up. exported around the world. Just as the Chinese have become the primary manufacturers of, of you know, uh, goods around the world, America has been the primary factor of the ingredients Mm -hmm. that are fueling silent inflammation. They are the, basically all coming from central Illinois. The refined mm -hmm. carbohydrates, the vegetable oils, and now these are so cheap, they're replacing other indigenous sources on a worldwide basis. And that's why we have more overweight people in the world today than malnourished people. Because why? We've been exporting silent inflammation around the world. I have this question later <coughs> on, but while you're on it, can you mention what omega-6s should the general public avoid, or at least decrease in consumption? Well, so that, that, that omega-6 to omega-3 is not like this. Is that what you're saying? That's that ratio exactly. is too high. Well, everywhere you see the world, vegetable oil, corn oils, soybean oils, sunflower oils, sapphire oils, these are all rich in omega-6 fatty acids. These did not exist until 80 years ago. Because to make these oils, you had to extract vegetable seeds with gasoline. There was no gasoline 80 years, <laughs> until 80 years ago. So before that time, what were our three primary sources of fats in the human diet? Lard, butter, butter and, and olive oil. None of which contain any significant amounts of omega-6 fatty acids. So no matter how much carbohydrates you ate, you would not have enough omega-6 fatty acids to, to make toxic AA. fat. Mm -hmm. And therefore, basically, uh, our genes were not being activated. But now that we are making more toxic fat, we're activating ancient genetic mechanisms. Mm. And basically, these are giving rise to not only obesity, but the epidemic rise of its fellow traveler, type 2 diabetes. OK. Um, you talk about in your book, The Fat Trap. Can you uh, sort of elaborate on that fat well, trap? The is fat this, trap is something is at the bottom of the ocean? No, it's actually <laughs> something in our genes. You know, people, you know your likelihood of becoming obese is governed by your genes. In fact, your likelihood of becoming obese is uh, more highly correlated to your genetics than is your likelihood of becoming tall. And so basically, about 75% of Americans are genetically predisposed to become obese. Not that they will, but it's how their genes are being activated by their diet. As long as they had a, a, not a pro-inflammatory diet, 
a diet that was increasing toxic fat, the toxic then those genes were under control. They were repressed. But as the levels of toxic fat have been increasing in our uh, bodies, those genes are now being activated. And the first sign of those is increased fat. Initially, it can be, oh, excuse me for a second. That, actually, I'm going to, while you do that, I'm going to say. Turn it softer. <coughs> Hey, it's, it's, yeah. this is the real world now. And we also had a trip, uh, a trip I'll call you back in a few <laughs> minutes. Bye bye. Sorry about that. I think no, it's perfect because I was going to say in your book that obesity is going to lead right into it. <coughs> your, your book, you say in your book that obesity is a cancer, which is a powerful statement. Yeah. And you also say that accumulation of excess body fat initially represents a biological defense trying to protect our bodies from this potential cancer. Can you explain that a little bit there? Well, you know, again, that... Uh, You're kind of going on that track, so I just want to know, get in there. As we basically built the levels of toxic fat, we actually have defense mechanisms to protect ourselves. Now, toxic fat is, as the word says, is fat. So what better way to basically, to basically remove toxic fat from the blood than to bury it in a toxic waste dump? 